Hi, this is Ashley Victoria Robinson, live from New York Comic Con here in the Popverse, and I am here with the creator of American Born Chinese and actual genius, my friend Dean Young. How are you today? Good, good. Good to see you again, Ashley. It's always so fun to talk to you. It's always amazing to see you and to see you get, I said this to you earlier, your star turn on the stage. It's been so sir. weird. It's been so weird. Yeah. Has it been a wild transition going from the book side of things, the library side of things, now up on the big stage promoting movies and television? I mean, I mean, in some ways, yes. In some ways, the, the, the room is way bigger, you know, and... Uh, <laughs> And, uh, you know, there's a giant screen behind us. They're showing these clips from this really, really expensive movie. But in other ways, it's, it's still kind of the same thing. Like, I'm up there with a bunch of other creatives, and we're talking about the creative process. Mm -hmm. so, so that part feels very much at home to me. I would also love to ask, because you were an educator, you remain an educator to all of us online. How has your education process translated into your professional life and now you're a big star? <laughs> well, I, I really loved being a teacher. So I was a high school teacher for 17 years. And, and I do think like a big part of teaching is trying to figure out how to communicate clearly, right? Mm -hmm. how, to, how to communicate effectively, how to get your students on board. And I feel the same way about my job as a cartoonist. I'm trying to communicate as effectively and as clearly as I can. It's just through comics instead of on a whiteboard. Mm -hmm. Is it tough, because you had so much control making the original graphic novel, is it tough to seed that? To other people, even though you have so many other geniuses joining you on it, this project? In some ways, um, it, it was okay because the graphic novel existed, right? The, the graphic novel, this is how I think of it. The graphic novel is, is mine, mm -hmm. but the show is ours. So I already have this story the way I wanted to do it when it was just me. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and what the show is, it's really like a bunch of people trying to figure out what's, what's our overlap. You know, what, what are we all holding in common in terms of our past experiences, in terms of how we see the world, and let's make a show out of that. It's, it's, uh, I, I feel so lucky to be connected with the folks that are connected to that show. You know, like Dustin Cretton is one of the greatest living directors right now. Superstar having, having a big moment right Absolutely. now. Absolutely, <laughs> huge moment, huge moment. And, and Kelvin, mm -hmm. um, all, of the, uh, all of the actors, they all just put so much heart into this thing that we're doing together. Do you ever find yourself watching pieces of the show or being on set and being shocked to see some of your story and yourself reflected back at you with other faces? Yes, yes. <laughs> on, on the very first day of shooting, I was on set um, and they were filming this scene with the two main characters, these two uh, Asian boys having a conversation about a toy robot. And that was directly out of my my book it was it was just really weird right it was this <laughs> panel that i grew, that i drew 20 years ago come to life in front of me okay so now i'd be remiss if i didn't ask what's your favorite toy robot oh ever ever ever, ever. It's, my favorite toy robot ever was one that i never got it was the g1 optimus prime oh. that i would look at in the you know montgomery wards catalog oh. when i was a kid and i never got it so you know what i got instead is i got the next best thing which was Huffer, oh, right? The other yes. semi, the other semi. <laughs> Wait, so how many do you own now as an adult? You know, I so I was I was collecting them for a little bit, and then I had kids. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And my son, who's now 18, but when he was a kid, he would like play with them and lose them. <laughs> so then that was the end of my collection. No more robot I still, I, Yeah, I have a collection in my heart. It's just <laughs> not physically in front of me. So I would also love to ask you, how did you handle from, the, from inception to now teaching the cast and the crew, how do you handle marrying real life, real world grounded stories, marrying it with mythological stories? Because that's yeah. tough. Yeah, I, um, I, I do feel like in, in the book, it's a little bit easier, right? Because everything's out of a pen. And yes. there are things that you can do as a cartoon that your reader will just automatically accept mm -hmm. simply because it's a cartoon. In, in terms of how that translates into a live action television show, I think we just relied on a lot of people with a lot of talent, including <laughs> like Kelvin Yu, the, the, the showrunner. I think he put a lot of his own heart and his own brain into it. Mm -hmm. And then, the, uh, and, and then the, uh, the fight coordinators and the costume designers, they all kind of like paired together, they all teamed up to try to figure out that transition. I think the way they handled it was stellar. It's been amazing to see characters in VFX, like the Monkey King in particular, yeah, yeah, yeah. writ large in real life like that. Yeah. Does it feel like they were plucked right out of your mind or is it an evolution from what you originally I, I do think it's an evolution because yeah. like the Monkey King's uh, costume in the show is so much cooler. <laughs> <laughs> like he kind of looks like a little Taiwanese schoolboy in the in the in the book, which is He's a cute. traditional thing. Yeah, it's a traditional yeah. thing. But they made him look cool in the show. <laughs> 
So action figures, Monkey King action yeah, figures? Yeah, who knows, who knows? <laughs> I think Daniel Wu would make a great action figure. I'm sure they already have Daniel Wu action figures. There has to be Into the Badland action figures. I'm at sure, the very right? Least. I'm sure. Yeah, 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 yeah. They have a wax figure of Daniel Wu in a, in a in museum in Hong Kong, oh, I believe. Wow. That's how big of a deal it is. Okay, that so... people are willing to hang out with a wax version of him. <laughs> so people have to go there and pose next to him That's now. Right. That's right. <laughs> I would also love to ask you, what is your advice to aspiring creatives? And you can do that in any field that you want because you are so multidisciplinary. Well, you know, I still consider myself a comics guy. I think for comics people, the, the big thing is just to fight that voice inside your head that tells you you're terrible. And what no. I found is, you know, I've been doing this for like 20 years. That voice just never goes away. You almost mm -hmm. have to kind of learn to live with it yes. and, and ignore it. That's, that's really the key. Just learn to ignore that voice because that voice is lying to you. <laughs> and as the progenitor of all things American born Chinese, are there any Easter eggs, episode specific moments that you want people to look out for when the series drops next year? Oh, okay. So I'll tell you this. Okay. Um, one of the key moments in the series is not directly in the book, but I do feel like it expresses something key to the book. Okay. And, and it's, a, it's a scene with Ki Kwan in it towards yes, the end <laughs> of the series. Mm -hmm. And, and I, when I saw that, I, I cheered up and I thought, man, he, he got something so right. Like, there's a reason why that guy is a legend. So I can't wait for people to see that. Okay, when you see it, tweet at Gene. Let him know that you saw it and it broke your heart. <laughs> <laughs> and then lastly, because here in the Pop First, we celebrate the best in TV, movies, and comics. What are you geeking out about right now that you're not working on? Because I know you have your fingers in a lot of pies. Yeah, so. well, the, the last comic I read, which was last night, it's... Uh, Issue three of Primordial, written yeah. by Jeff Lemire. Yeah, that, yeah. that's his, it's, a, it's an amazing, I he mean, he's one of my favorites. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's one of my favorites. Jeff Lemire, like when I look at the level at which he's producing and how much he's producing, I just think, man, I, I wish I could be a little more like that. He's, he's great. Gene, you're the best. Thank you for joining us here Thank in the you, Pop Ashley. First today. Thank you so much.